Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Today, I will be ranking the four Philadelphia sports teams. Now, keep in mind, whatever team is fourth and whatever team is first, there's not much separation between them. I love all these teams. I wear them on my sleeve, literally. I have so much passion for these squads. Just because one team has to be four, and just because there's an emotional tie towards one team compared to the other, it doesn't actually mean that I love one more than the other. I wouldn't be able to choose. It's like having four kids, if you will. This is the best way to describe it. And I don't have kids, so I don't know what this feels like yet, but I'm just basing this off of what other people say and what parents say. When you have four kids or multiple kids, you don't love one more than the other. They're all unique in their own way, and you love them all the same. It's just different for each child. And that's how I feel about these squads. They are my children. So just because one is ranked four, and I get it, you're not going to rank your children one through four because that's not morally what you do. But I care about these teams so much. It hurts. It hurts. It really does. It hurts. They put me through a lot more pain than they do joy. That's what sports is, though. I mean, that's just what it is. That's what sports is all about. The emotional tie, the connection from fans to the team, to the city, the support, the community. And uh, listen, I always think about this. You can't choose where you're born. You don't choose that stuff. I was lucky enough to be born in a city like Philadelphia that cares about their sports teams so crazily. I mean, really. They are obnoxious. And I say they, I'm part of it. We are obnoxious. Sometimes I drive myself crazy hearing these takes that are nuts and ridiculous and filled with overpassion, if you will. I mean, it's too much passion where people lose logic. And sometimes it drives me crazy. Then I was informed by some of the co-workers at 97.3 and some of the people I work with that said, you do go nuts at times, you do seriously wonder how other individuals think the way that they do, but then you go work in a city like San Diego, or then you go work in a city that isn't even close to Philadelphia, and then you come back and realize, holy shit, this is completely different. Holy hell, is Philadelphia one awesome place to be when it comes to covering sports? If you freak out about Gabe Kapler making a decision in Philadelphia, it makes a lot of sense. Everyone does that. People want to see their manager properly handle the bullpen or properly handle pinch hitting. If you go to San Diego and you cover sports and you freak out about the manager in the sixth inning pulling the starting pitcher... Nobody even knows who the starting pitcher is. Nobody even knows who the manager is. I don't even know if people know who the Padres are. And that's the beauty of this place. And sometimes I I do appreciate the people that drive me crazy. Because I put it in perspective of at least I'm in a city that cares. But I'm not going to lie. Come on now with some of the takes that I hear. Come on now. All right, so let's kick this off, and I think we'll go backwards. We will go backwards, so we will start with number four, and I feel like this may shock people based off of my background and everything that I have done throughout my life when it comes to sports, but it is the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, when it comes to the emotional tie of the Philadelphia Flyers, this, this is my baby. I grew up with a dad who had season tickets, and he was the standard old-fashioned I love the Broad Street Bullies. He loved the Dave Schultzes of the of the NHL. He loved the fighting. He loved all of it. I mean, it was the classic dad who had season tickets to the Flyers back in the 70s, the 80s. He was the Broad Street Bullies guy. And he would bring me to all the games, and I fell in love with the game of hockey, and I played it myself, and I played juniors, and I played in college, and I went through it. And I feel like when it comes to a sports broadcasting point of view or from a journalist point of view, I think that's why I don't enjoy it as much as the other teams. Now, I love the game of hockey. I love watching the NHL. I follow all of it. 
I also have some friends that are playing in the league and they play really high level. So I also feel like that takes away from it as well. I, I root for them to win. You know, I want the Flyers to win. I want to see the Stanley Cup down Broad Street. But when my buddies are playing the Flyers, I want to see them succeed. When the Flyers aren't on, I'm watching them on NHL Game Center. So I just feel like maybe because I was so connected to the sport as a player myself, it somewhat takes away from the fan part of me when it comes to the game of hockey. I still enjoy it to an obnoxious degree. I tune in all the time. I'm at the point now where with, well, when games were actually on with NHL Game Center, when I'm relaxing in bed and when I'm kicking back late night, it's 10 o'clock and a lot of people are searching for West Coast games, whether it's basketball or watching ESPN, Scott Van Pelt, I'm flipping back and forth through the second periods, the third periods of these games out in Vancouver or these games in Vegas or San Jose. I'm watching the NHL all the time. From this standpoint, though, from covering the team and from dissecting the plays. I don't know. It's not the same to me with hockey, and I feel like it's just based off of being so involved heavily with the sport. But it it does hold so much value to me because that was the connection with me and my dad. We would go all the time to the first union center. We would he would he would he would have two tickets, him and his buddy. And I would be so young that, you know, when you have a young kid, you don't need a seat for them. They sit on the lap or you don't actually need a ticket for young kids. I would be seven years old, eight years old. And he would sneak me in as if I'm a newborn child. So him and his buddy could use the two tickets and I would somewhat sit on his lap or sit right in front of him. Uh, I remember those days going crazy. The Penguins, Casparitis and, and... Oh, man, those rivalries were something else. But there would be some sort of breath of fresh air if the Flyers would ever win the Stanley Cup. And who knows? Maybe this was the year it would have all happened. And, of course, the coronavirus would have taken that away from me because it's the Philadelphia Flyers. Of course that would happen. They just can't ever get it done, right? If the Flyers ever were to do it, that would hit home for me the most. And I'll relate that to what happened with the Eagles back in 2017. When they won, there were so many people in this city that had that family member, that had that one person, that it it just meant so much to experience that moment with them. If the Flyers were to ever do it, it would be my dad for me. That would be the same feeling that you had for the Eagles Super Bowl, and I had that too with other family members, but the Flyers would be at the ultimate high of the list just based off of that time that I had with my dad growing up with hockey. So weirdly, I know it's weird because of my background with the game, but it would be the Flyers at four. Coming in at number three, the Philadelphia Phillies. I love the sport of baseball. There's something about having a game basically every single night that I enjoy so much. Now, my girlfriend, she's not a huge fan when it's baseball season because, oh, I got to watch this. This is slow. This is boring. And a lot of the times I'll say, all right, listen, you can watch what you want on the TV. I'll have my laptop on my lap and I'll have the my team's NBC Sports Philadelphia stream with my one earphone in so I'm watching the game I'm dissecting it but I'll let her watch what she wants on the TV so I can still be with her because she can't stand watching that much baseball it's so slow and it's every night I get that listen I'm a reasonable guy all right I'll allow her to watch what she wants but when it comes to the game of baseball and seeing the Phillies go out there it's tough I'll say this it's definitely tough to watch brutal baseball during that stretch after the amazing runs that the Phillies had year after year after year. Once it started to go down, I lost that oomph. But that's every sport. Even with the Flyers, if it's bad, it's hard to watch. The only team that that doesn't really hold much value with is the Eagles because it's football. Browns fans, they watch the Browns. They almost laugh at the Browns because it's so ridiculous to think that they continue to be that piss poor. So it's almost intriguing. Like, damn, they are this bad? You will watch football if the team's bad or not. With the Phillies, it's so hard to watch 162 games of bad baseball. So knowing that they're back on the uprise, as much as we crush 
Matt Klintak, and as much as we destroy the front office right now because they need to go out and get more pitchers, and the starting pitching was the nightmare, the bullpen is still atrocious, Soranti Dominguez is going to have to have Tommy John, but he doesn't know if he wants to get it, which is an absolute dumpster fire of a situation. You demand him to get it because he needs to get it, but I digress. With all of that frustration, when it comes to If you have a good product on the field and the Phillies are definitely starting to get back into that situation, every single night when you know the Mets are in town, right? Come on, the New York Mets. I hate that logo with a disgrace. I really do. I can't stand seeing the blue, the orange, that rivalry. It's something special. It pisses me off when the Mets beat the Phillies. I can't stand it. There's something to be said about the the way you hear Bryce Harper hit a dinger, hit a bomb, and it comes off the bat, that pop, or a sick play in the in the infield where they're turning two, where you hear the pop of the glove when Aaron Nola throws a disgusting fastball, even though it's not like his fastball touches high 90s, he's more of a low 90s guy, you still hear the pop in JT Real Muto's mitt, and I'm using the the last year's team as the example because that's what's fresh in my mind. As I stated, the years prior to last, it was a boring kind of with Mikel Franco in there and Odubel Herrera and Cesar Hernandez, and you don't have a bunch of oomph, and you got a team that really had no business even competing. It was tough. But when it comes to the sport of baseball, I love it. You got a three-game series against the Atlanta Braves late in August, and it's actually meaningful. Meaningful baseball is so elite and so fun to watch, where you need to start diving in pitch by pitch late in the summer because everything matters, because you're two games up in the division, or you're three games back from the Washington Nationals, and you got to fight, scratch, and crawl to get yourself back at the top of the division. Those are the type of moments that's electric. When it's bad, it is really, really awful. Awful, awful, awful. But when it's good, or even, I mean, last year, I wouldn't even say it was great baseball, but it was watchable baseball. If you have watchable baseball, at least that still gives you the butterflies of being able to tune in every single night. Monday, game at 7. Tuesday, game at 7. Wednesday, game at 7. The worst part is when you have that rain delay. And then you got to, oh, you're waiting at 7 o'clock. It's now 8. It's now 9. It's now 9.30. Oh, they might start. Oh, here comes another thunder stri- or lightning strike and thunder you gotta sit well we're gonna postpone it oh those are the worst moments no doubt about it but there's something to be said about hitting that diamond it's a Sunday afternoon it's one o'clock it's a little sunny it's a little hot but there's breeze in there as well and you're at the ballpark it's dollar dog night you're getting some cold ones those cold ones might be $14 but the experience is great heading down to Citizens Bank Park you relax and you enjoy the beautiness of the timeless game oh stop and I'm getting the goose bumps. I'm getting the chills and I miss baseball. The Phillies should be rolling right now. They should still be undefeated. They would be crushing every squad right now. They should be playing baseball and there's no doubt I miss it. I miss hearing how about this? I I miss hearing the broadcast. I'm not a big Ben Davis guy. I'm not a big John Cruck guy. I know everyone gives Tom McCarthy a hard time. I think he's been doing a way better job, honestly. He started to find himself, and I, I think he really has become a better play-by-play guy. No doubt. I actually enjoy it. But I'm missing Cruck. I'm missing Ben Davis, and I, which is crazy because I'm not huge fans of them. But you know who I am a big fan of, and I I'm so disgusted that I don't get to see him on Philly's post game live anymore. Ricky Bo, Ricky Bo, are you kidding me? After a game Kapler botched situation, here comes Ricky Bo on post game live with this face that's red, ready to really get going and ready to rip game. Whew, those were the days. And I don't think he's going to be doing that with Joe Girardi. And how about Joe Girardi? Like, I just want to see baseball. Every night, I want to see baseball. It's a 3-2 count. Aaron Nola's on the bump. He's facing Pete Alonso. What's he going to do? Where is he going to place the pitch, the guessing game? Watching the pitchers. Okay, well, he threw it last time 2-0. Here, what's he going to do in this situation? Will he go off speed? Is he going to challenge the batter with a high-rising fastball? The guessing game. Me sitting there trying to feel out what these pitchers are going to throw in these certain situations. Is Reese Hoskins going to miss swing and miss 
something right down the middle of the plate? Probably. Ew, I hate that that's my answer. But probably. Those are the moments that I am missing right now. And number three on my list, if it's good baseball, is the Philadelphia Phillies. Watchable baseball, it's the Phillies. Number two. Number two. That reminds me of uh, Austin Powers when I did that. The Sixers. Here's the thing, though. The Sixers are my number two. At this point, we know the Eagles are number one, and and we will get to that. The Sixers, though, are my favorite team, if that makes sense. The Eagles, it's the biggest thing in the city. I love them. Sundays, it's football. The NFL takes over. I understand all that. They're so big. Nothing will ever compete with the Eagles in this city. So they are number one. Number two is the Sixers, but they are my favorite. I know that doesn't make much sense. Basketball is my favorite sport. I admire it. It's poetry. It's poetry. The ball movement, the pick and rolls, the screens, the dunks, the alley-oops, the defense. It's poetry. It's my number one sport, even though the Eagles are my number one. So let's get to the Sixers. I was that guy, that standard hockey guy that just thought hockey was the greatest. Every other sport sucked. Hockey's the greatest thing in the world. I was that typical, I'm just going to say it, that typical douche that didn't respect any other sport for its beauty. And it was hockey, 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 hockey. Then I opened my eyes. I had a buddy who was a big-time Sixers fan. He's like, dude, you got to watch these games with me. I got to take you to a game. You got to experience. You have to give this sport a chance. Okay, fine. I will. I promise I will. And thank the Lord I did because it changed my life. This is also my friend who showed me what sports talk radio is. I mean, he, we joke around about it all the time. You changed my life, literally, because without him showing me basketball and then showing me sports talk radio, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it is so wild that this is where I am right now, sitting in my studio in my basement, freaking out on podcasts all the time, showing my energy, showing my passion, all because he told me to give basketball a chance. And maybe that's why basketball is my favorite sport in the city and why that it's my favorite team to watch, even though the Eagles are my number one. I still need to make sure that that's clear, even though it makes no sense whatsoever. Maybe that is why. The last few seasons of having Ben, having Joel, and knowing that these guys are at the top of the league, plenty of, plenty, plenty of growth that needs to come. Right now, it's a tough time with the Sixers because the expectations were so high and everybody's down on them. So it's hard to speak highly of the Sixers at the moment. But when it just comes to the sport of basketball and watching the Sixers and the Wells Fargo Center selling out, being one of the most electric stadiums in all of sports right now. I mean, it's sold out. It's so loud. It's aggressive. I've been to a few other arenas around the league, and it doesn't even compare. And then you talk about playoff time. Everyone's rocking the blue shirts. The place goes insane. I mean, it's insane. It's similar to what I said about the San Diego Padres and being in another market. If you haven't experienced a basketball game outside of Philadelphia, which not everybody has the opportunity to do it, I don't know if you appreciate it as much. It might just seem and you might just think that that's normal. This is what it is. This is how it is in the NBA. But I'm going to be honest with you. It's not. It's like that here. Sure, it's like that in Boston and The Golden State Warriors, when they're going on runs, it's loud in that building. When you have a good team, for the most part, teams will go to those arenas and sell out and be nuts. There's something special, though, in the Wells Fargo Center when when the Sixers are tipping off and playing their best ball. And it's so unique. The experience of being on the court. I think that's one thing that really stands out to me about watching Sixers basketball and the sport of basketball. Being on the court. You're a part of the game. Home field advantage matters in... It definitely matters in football. You can see it statistically when it comes to playoffs. I don't know if it matters that much in hockey. It's probably the least... It it, it matters the least amount in hockey. Baseball, sure, there's value, but I would push that more towards hockey as well. Baseball, Basketball and football, it, it matters probably the most. In basketball, though, it changes the game. 
It has such a big impact. You are part of the game more in basketball than any other sport. When there's a 20 to 12 run, when there's an 8 to 0 run, when there's a big run for the Sixers, that that's the juice. You have the other team calling timeout. You got the PA announcer going. The fans stand up. They go crazy. They're clapping their hands. And then guess what? Out of that timeout, here comes the Sixers. Maybe they get a stop. And there's a fast break. And it's Ben Simmons on that fast break. He attacks the rim. He gives a monster slam. And he does his traditional scream. And he pretty much blows the smoke out of the emoji type face. And he's flexing hard. And he's going... The way the crowd reacts, there's the connection for me when it comes to the crowd and the swagger of the players. The swag of the players. You make a great play in football or hockey. You do a celebration in the end zone or on the ice. You jump up into the glass. That's cool. That's cool. It's not the same as having an alley-oop dump dunk, dunking on somebody, and then being two inches from the people in the first row and looking at them with with this, yeah, yeah, I did that. Or Joel Embiid doing what he does, bringing everybody together, dancing after a a three. He hits a three, he's backpedaling, he's shaking, he's shimmying while Future's playing. Wicked, 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 right? And then you see a timeout being called. It's the fan to team bond in the sport of basketball and with the 76ers that totally brings me in. Eagles, number one. I I think I made it pretty clear at this point. It's football. It's the NFL. It's the Eagles. It's seeing Carson Wentz, Doug Peterson. It's the fact that on a Monday, whatever happened on Sunday changes your entire week. It changes your week for the entire fall. If they win, you're good to go. You're walking into Wawa. Hey, I'll get your coffee, right? I mean, it's all about the Eagles. You're hearing Doug Peterson's press conference while you're driving to Wawa. It's all good vibes. Sports Talk Radio, great vibes. Everyone's happy. How great did Carson look? What about Zach Ertz? How about the defense? Jim Schwartz caught a great game. They they had five sacks. I mean, it's all great. It's all dandy, right? It's the It's the... The way the entire community changes based off of the Eagles. They have that much of an impact. Everyone has a smile on their face. You see everyone wearing the apparel. The alternative is, though, when they do lose, it's super disappointing. You have the Monday woes, the overreaction Monday, and then Tuesday there's still some overreaction Wednesday. You start to convince yourself it wasn't as bad as you thought. Then your Thursday, Friday, okay, hey, we can win on Sunday. We can win on Sunday, and you start convincing yourself, and then it's a one big cycle, and it's all over. But it's just the fact that this team and this city is one, and it, it, it matters. It matters so much. It is extremely important to everyone involved. There are people who aren't big sports fans. They're not big sports fans. It's Sunday, though. The Eagles are on. It's on the TV. Now, whether they're paying attention to formations, Doug Peterson's play calling, Carson Wentz's mechanics, Miles Sanders, Andre Dillard's blocking on the left side, or whether they just have it on and it's on volume four, It's on the TV. It's on the TV because it has that much power to everyone involved in an area. And that's really not just the Eagles. It's football in general. But to me, that's why the Eagles are number one on my list. Because there is something to be said about how I feel for an entire week because of a team. With the Sixers, if they lose to the Cavs on a Tuesday night in November, okay, I'm bothered. Why couldn't they get the job done? That stinks. But guess what? On Thursday, they play the Celtics. Or on on whatever next day, they end up having a game against the Toronto Raptors. Or they play the Hornets. Or they play another team. And they win. All right, well, guess what? That that loss against Cleveland, all right, guess what? They won the next game. Let's start rolling again. There's so many games that you forget about the other ones so quickly because you look ahead and say, well, there's a back-to-back. 
So, hey, if they win one of two in this back-to-back against Boston and Milwaukee, all right, you're satisfied as long as they show you effort in both nights. They show you good efforts in both nights. If they lose to Milwaukee and Milwaukee, but they play hard, but they beat the Celtics at home, it's a back-to-back. All right, let's let's just go to the next game. It's not the same with football. But the, to see Carson Wentz run out the tunnel and to see how hyped these players get, it gives me goosebumps. When it comes to football and the play- player aspect to see how hype they are the amount of I guess hype is the best way to describe it to see them running out the tunnel when it was Malcolm Jenkins we will no longer have that but when Malcolm Jenkins has his fist up with all the DBs in a huddle and he's getting the boys going and he's firing them up and he's pounding on his chest and they run out the tunnel I mean just the emotional side of these players gets me so amped up to the point where I miss my athlete days I miss the days where I was a, a competitive athlete where I had my music in before a game I'm doing my dynamic warm-up. I'm skating around the ice in pre-game warm-ups, and I'm getting so juiced and so amped up. Football brings me back to those moments, and I absolutely miss those moments. If there's one thing I miss the most, other than the locker room, being with the boys, hanging out with the guys outside of the ice, and what happens on the ice, too, battling it out, blocking shots and all that, it, it's the fact that I miss that that jolt, and you can't replicate that. I always question... Could I have that with Sports Talk Radio before I go on to one of my shows, whether it's at 97.3 ESPN or anywhere else? Will I be able to mentally prepare with music and get juiced up? And it sounds silly, right? The answer is no. I've tried it. You will not recreate that type of moment for yourself. And football gives me that. On top of just the way the game is, you know, it's a chess match. And you're looking at formations. What is the other defense putting out there? What is Carson Wentz going to do? Is he going to walk up to the line of scrimmage? Will he audible out of something that Doug Peterson called? It's it's all of these players working together to, to win this game, which is war. They go to war on Sundays, and their bodies go through this battle that you can't even comprehend. That's why it's all so special to me. And to be honest with you, the the athletic ability by these people, it's so out there, it's unfathomable, and because there's so many of these players in the league, it almost seems like, oh, it's not that crazy, this guy runs up, enter his 40 number here, but in reality, that's an absurd 40 number, it's absurd, it's just there's so many of these players who are so talented and athletic, you put them all together and you don't know what you're going to get, and every Sunday you get these crazy plays, right, and you get these plays by Miles Sanders, where you're just like, whoa, what the hell was that, or you get a wild catch out of Zach Ertz, or Carson Wentz is escaping the pocket like he did against the Redskins, that's my favorite one to always bring up where you're what or the Falcons where he's this close again on the ground go watch that Falcons play again go watch the one against the Seattle Seahawks the year they won the Super Bowl where he's getting chased down from behind and he's throwing the ball as he's getting tackled from behind those type of plays it's 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 what what how how does that happen and it keeps me on my toes and I I do get this butterfly feeling when it's late in a football game, when it's the fourth quarter where there's six minutes to go, where it's a three-point game, whether Carson has the ball or the defense has the ball, and and I start pacing around my kitchen. The Sixers playoff games, I do that. Not so much regular season, but playoff games. I do the pace. I get anxious. I have anxiety and all that. For football, though, it's every week, every fourth quarter, as long as it's a close game. If it's a 20-point game, yeah, I'm not having that feeling. But there's something to be said about that woozy feeling, and I don't even like that feeling, but that's how I know how much it matters to me. I don't enjoy the feeling. The feeling sucks. I have my face in a pillow at times. It blows. But that's how I know how meaningful it is to me, and that's why it is number one on my list. So, Down below in the comments, if you are watching on YouTube, please put your list. And if you want to put a little description, I will absolutely read them as well. Put your list, one through four, on the Philadelphia sports teams. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you can leave a review and comment that way. I will read those as well. So thank you so much. I know this is a little bit different of an episode you know, hey, with right now and everything that's going on, there's going to be some episodes like this where it's more storytelling with sports. 
And then there's going to be times where it's, say, the Eagles need to do this and the Sixers need to do that. And they will be more heavily invested on what needs to happen with these teams. we got to be creative at this time as sports talk creators. So with this, it's a little different, more story-driven. But hey, that's that's what we have for this Friday. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.